Greetings, children of God. My name is Nam Charity Talent, and once again we are here to talk about God's love for man. For whoever has not subscribed to the channel, please do, and for whoever did not watch the previous video, please do because this is a continuation of the previous video that we had. Now, we are talking about God's love for man, and we are looking at different topics about how God has loved us, different topics of how, we're talking about different topics, talking about how God has loved us. And yesterday we were talking about how God has loved us through nature. And today we are going to talk about the very verse that we are using as the memory verse. We are under the theme, our love to Heavenly Father. And yesterday we talked about nature, and today we are going to talk about the same verse that is our memory verse. Let us pray before we begin. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for yet another day that you have made us to be here. We thank you, Father, for the chance that I get to talk about your love. We pray, Father, that you continue to give us a spirit of understanding so that we can know more about your love, more and more about your love. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So today, we are going to open our Bibles in the book of First John chapter three verse one says, "But see what the great love, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are." When the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Now, this verse is telling us about how God has loved us. It is telling us that we have been loved. We have the, the, the other version says, "What manner of love that." Father has bestowed upon us. It is the great love that God in his divinity, in his holy being, in his capacity, in his strength, in his might, he has looked at us and decided that we should be called children of God. Now, we are going to look at two more verses that talk about how we are called children of God, about how God has loved us, that we be called his sons and daughters. Let us read John chapter 1, verse 12. What does it say? John chapter 1, verse 12. It says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This is another verse that is talking about us being called children of God. Now, that is our second verse. Let us get to the third verse so that we confirm. It might be a scam in one verse, maybe. But let us confirm in three different verses that we are children of God indeed. Let us open Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. What does it say? It says, therefore, we are going to read verses 17 and 18. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse 18. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons. Daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I like, says the Lord Almighty. He is the Almighty, but he has looked and looked and said, this should be my children, this should be my sons, this should be my daughters. Isn't it amazing? Now, God in his divinity, God in us his children. This is the father saying that we are his children. But there is the son. What does the son say? The father could have allowed us to be children, but the son does not want us to be his brothers and sisters. Now let us first confirm, does the son, Christ himself, allow us to be his brothers and sisters? We are going to read that in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse, verse 46, we shall read up to 50 so that we can get to know the whole, the whole intention of the verse. It says, chapter 2, verse 46, it says, While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, listen carefully. Here is my brother. 
and my mother. Here are my here are my mother and my brothers. So whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. Now the son has also allowed us to be his siblings. He has allowed us. But we have been adopted in God's family, in the royal family, in the holy family, in the divine family as sons and daughters of God. Now, we have now confirmed that we are children. But as children, we have other benefits as children. Now, we shall read from Romans. We shall read from Romans chapter 8. Yes, Romans chapter 8, verse 17. What does it say? Romans chapter 8, verse 17. It says, Now if we are children, the fact that we have confirmed that we are children of God, now this is what is for us, that and now if we are children, then we are heirs. Being an heir is something like having an inheritance that you're going to inherit, like you're going to inherit something, so you become an heir. It says, then we are heirs, heirs of God. Praise God. We are heirs of God. God in his divinity. God in his might. We are heirs of him. Now, we are not only heirs of God, but we are co-heirs with Christ. Praise the Lord. It says, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we, are, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Now, we are not only heirs of God, but for heirs with Another version says joint heirs. Another version says that I like the other version. It says that what belongs to him belongs to us also. Joint heirs means that you're going to inherit exactly what the other one is going to, to inherit. Now, when you read Genesis, when you read Genesis, I think it is chapter 1, if I'm not wrong, yes. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man, mankind in our image. Now, why am I bringing this? We believe that if you read this verse, we believe that God was not, the Father was not alone when he was creating the world. Now here he says, Let us make mankind in our image. Now it means they are aware. More than one person who was who were creating who were creating man, and we believe that it was Christ and the Holy Spirit. Now, Christ, we shall maybe have another lesson to talk about the fact that the Father would say, "Let us do this," and Christ goes and does what the Father says. That is going to be maybe another topic. But for today, if we believe that Christ was with God as He was creating, now that makes Christ. The creator himself. Now just imagine God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they created us. Now I'm saying God the Son is the creator. But again, we are inheriting the kingdom with him. Like we are becoming co heirs with the creator. God is so amazing. God is so amazing that he created us and we sin, by the way. He was sinless. He created us and we sin. But again, he has adopted us. Now, not only has the Father adopted us, but called us his children. Not only has he called us his children, but he has called us his heirs. We are becoming heirs of God. Not only are we becoming heirs of God, but joint heirs with Christ. That's so amazing. It is indeed amazing that when you start looking at that love that the Father has bestowed upon us, that we call children of God in the first place, that is grace enough. Now, he, he does not stop at that, but he calls us heirs. He calls us his children. He calls us his heirs. And we are joint heirs with the Son himself. Sometimes you may feel like, to me, sometimes I read somewhere and I feel like, 
think the father loves us more than he loves his own son. If we read the book of John chapter 10 verse 17, as we close, John chapter 10 verse 17, what does it say? You will have the evidence that the father loves us so very much. Chapter, chapter 10 verse 17, it says that, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. The other version says, yeah, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Now this does not mean that the father did not love the son. No. We shall have maybe another, another time to talk about interpretation of the Bible, interpretation of scriptures, the Holy Spirit and all that. But this verse does not say, does not mean that the father did not love the son. No. It has another meaning and that meaning is the one that will make you realize, will make you think that the father loves us more than the son. If you read this, this book, Steps to Christ, it's a very good book. We used it yesterday. Uh, now, it says, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. She's quoting the verse. The other is called Ellen G. White. She, she has a lot of other books, one of which is so amazing, and this is the one. So she explains that my father has so loved me. She's trying to explain the verse. That is, my father has so loved you that he even loves me more for giving my life to redeem you. Of course, he came on earth to redeem us. What we know, came, Christ came on earth to save us. Now, the Bible is telling us that the father loves the son even more because he has allowed to redeem us. I want us to give an example. If you're a father out there and you adopt a child, and this child, you not only call that child your son, but you make him for air with your own son, with your biological son. Now, I don't know if there is biology up in heaven, but just imagine you you make him a joint heir with your own son. The son that was there before is inheriting the same things that the adopted son is inheriting. You don't only stop there. Maybe this adopted adopted son commits a crime. And then the police comes and says, he has to go to prison, what, what, what. And then your own son says, that no, I will go. Or they say, that let your son go to prison so that he can pay for what the adopted son has done. Just imagine. And then they take the son. And now, your son... Who has gone to prison, your biological son who has gone to prison instead of your adopted son, you instead love him more because he has allowed to go to prison. I think that is loving the adopted son more than your own son himself. You know, Christ was sinless, but he allowed to come and pay for our debts, for our sins, which he had not committed. And God's, God loves him even more because he has come to redeem us. I think that is great love that is so uncomparable. Now, as we are talking about God's love for the whole of this week, I want us to contemplate on most of these things. We talked about nature in the previous video, and now we are talking about how God has loved us and he has called us his children and has called us his heirs, joint heirs with Christ himself. We shall talk about the divinity of Christ. And if you look at the divinity of Christ and you see that, we are at his level in God's sight that Christ is his, is God's, is the Father's son, and we are also his children. You will realize that the love that God has for us is so much. Now, we, now, it does not stop there that we are called children of God. Not everyone is a child of God by the way. That is a point to note. We shall read. If we read in John chapter 1 verse 12 where he says that he has given us the power to become his sons and daughters, there is another condition that is there. First John, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 12, it says that 
yet to all who did receive him to those who believe in his name now this merely means that you are his child only if you believe him only if you receive him that is the first verse if we go back to second corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 and 18 he says therefore come out of them and be separate says the lord touch no unclean thing and i will receive you now here he was talking he was talking about idolatry and all the other the, the other bad vices that they had he was saying come out of them and i will receive you now this means if you do not come out he will not receive you just come out of them take no unclean thing and i will receive you and i will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters now that means you only become his son, you only become his daughter if you come out of what he tells you to come out from. Even when uh, Jesus Christ was saying, here is my mother, here is my sister, here is my brother, he said, whoever does the will of my father. Now, it does not mean that everyone is the brother, no. Everyone who does the will of the father, everyone who does what the father says, is he who is going to be called the brother and the sister. There is a lot that we can talk about, but we are out of time. But as we pray, as we contemplate on what we have had today, let us think of how God has loved us in different kinds of ways. And as we are going to have many more videos about how God has loved us, we realize that the love for God is too much. Thank you for listening and let us pray as we conclude. Father Lord in heaven, we want to thank you so very much because you have allowed us yet again to see how you have loved us so much that you have called us your children. Father, we pray that may we be willing to do that that you require of us and that we shall be called sons and daughters and that we shall be heirs and that we shall inherit the kingdom that you have spared for us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us and for answering our prayers. This we pray, trusting and believing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you as you look forward to seeing and watching more other videos that are coming. Thank you so much.